Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Uh, people um, are afraid looking at all these forces arrayed against the church. Uh, uh, enemies of the church who despise Christianity, despise the church, uh, want to eradicate it from the earth. Uh, forces and currents hostile to Christ and his church swirling all around dark clouds on the horizon. Many people are find themselves discouraged by this. Uh, and a uh, topsy-turvy nature of the church within itself. Uh, yeah, some people seem like enemies of the church, and they're in the church trying to destroy it from the inside out. However, the church keeps on moving along because it's seed. Oh, man. There's a great uh, line from Isaiah. Um, it's, it's, it's just this uh, indomitability of the church because God's behind it. So Israel couldn't be discouraged, even though, you know, the uh, tree got chopped down. This uh, royal line of David, this uh, line of anointed kings that lasted like 400 years. I mean, it's just unbelievable. One of the longest running dynasties in the history of the world. And it looked like it was, um, going to go on forever and eventually there was going to be a fulfillment of this uh, prophecy of Nathan to David in 2 Samuel 7 that there's going to be an anointed one uh, a special son of David who's going to come one day who's going to claim an eternal throne and whom God is going to call his son and everybody's kind of waiting for that well what happens the tree gets chopped down by the Babylonians in the sixth century, and it was the whole dynasty of King David came to an end, and was has never since come to the fore. So here's this dead stump for centuries. Uh, but what's different about this stump sitting there? Isaiah explains to us: the holy seed is its stump. The holy seed is its stump. Ooh. God planted that tree. Um, that's what gives us our great confidence and indomitability. Because in the Old Testament, we saw, like, man, it looked pitiful. I mean, they were overrun by nation after nation. Uh, Syrians and Babylonians and the Persians and the Greeks and now the Romans and they're just like just, just marginalized. One remaining tribe out of 12 is hanging on by their fingernails under the domination of this foreign oppressor. What about all the great promises and kingdom that reaches to the four corners of the earth and and here's this dead stump for centuries now. Almost 600 years, this stump sitting there. Where's the fulfillment of all these promises, of these prophecies? I mean, it looked really good. God knew what he was doing. He, was, he knew exactly what he was doing. The holy seed is its stump. Divine activity is behind this thing. That's what makes this initiative, plan, or undertaking different. So with that kind of Old Testament context, I just... Let's look at the New Testament. So when our Lord came, you know, it looked pretty bad at first. Uh, all that's left is this band of apostles now, uh, given a special little privileged formation by the Son of God, however, to be these 12 foundation stones of the walls of the heavenly Jerusalem we heard described there in the book of Revelation. So, pretty important guys. Incredibly important selection of those 12 apostles. Uh, those apostolic office created by the Son of God. Per door to this day. And that's the key. It's not a man-made invention concoction, you know, initiative. It's God's initiative. 
divine activity behind this thing that we're part of. Do we believe that? We're tempted to despair like the Jews, you know, they despaired of that because it's just like they look around and it's like, oh, okay, there's divine activity here. What the heck? Uh, there was, and a little shoot sprung forth from that dead stump. As the prophet said, a, a shoot shall, shall spring forth from the stump of Jesse. Isaiah will tell them, and it'll be repeated by Jeremiah, and Hosea mentions it, okay, a little shoot, a netzer, a netzerine is going to come, Jesus of Nazareth, branch town, or shoot town, okay, he comes from this place. God was faithful to all the prophecies and all the promises, even though it looked really dark and desolate, he fulfilled them. And now in the New Testament, it looks like a desperate uh, attempt. Uh, this, this, this little band of uh, guys that our Lord left behind was going to carry this thing to the ends of the earth. Really? They did. And how do you explain it? The growth, spread, and development of Christianity is miraculous all over the face of the earth. Divine activity. Say who says this the best is uh, Paul's mentor. Uh, Paul was trained under the tutelage of this revered rabbi of the time who was a member of the Sanhedrin, Gamaliel, who tradition says later became a Christian. And when the apostles were drug in in Acts chapter 5 before the Sanhedrin and interrogated so interesting. Uh, they're like, what do we do with these guys? What do we do with these guys? And Gamaliel stands up and addresses the whole congregation. And now uh, he's got serious gravitas, this guy Gamaliel. And he says, leave these guys alone. Keep away from these men and, and, and leave them alone. Look, if this plan or this undertaking is of men, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may be even found opposing God. Good luck with that. Same thing in the Old Testament. All these uh, nations come along and overrun, steamroll, uh, seemingly thwart God's plan. They can't stop it. They can't stop his plan unfolding divine activity even in a hidden underground way it's still there it's still latent it has this property of buoyancy because the holy seed is its stump because it was planted by the almighty and god planted these 12 men and nothing's going to stop it don't try to stop it just keep away from it. let it alone and it's not worth it. Look at these other examples of human initiatives that fizzled out. Womp, womp, womp. And he names a couple of them. And he's like, just let these guys die on their own. They'll fizzle out. It's not going to amount to nothing. God's behind this thing. And that's what we have to see. The church lurching and swerving. I love that expression. I, I got from a, some Bible school. Catholic Bible scholar talking about the church down through the ages in human history is like lurching and swerving, but still erect. Like we're still moving forward somehow. Um, so I want everybody to just uh, do not let your hearts be troubled, as our Lord said here, or afraid. Okay? Because uh, that principle of life that principle of divine activity uh, is still in the church today.